Hey guys, I am at Bootleggers Brewing here in Tampa, Florida, and I'm about to play one of my live acoustic gigs. Only this time, we're not just doing acoustic, we're gonna integrate some electric, and how we're gonna do that is, well, you know, I've been looking at something that was going to give me the ability to simplify my setup and also integrate some electric in as well as acoustic. So, I've got this little unit right here, the pod go and we're playing through that for the very first time and say hello to the owner sean of bootleggers brewing you have What's to be up, careful what this guy says <laughs> yes be you do very cautious <laughs> hey thank you for letting me play here by the way dude thanks for showing up to work <laughs> Yes, <laughs> a lot of people don't. and I showed up on time. <laughs> so guys, we're going to set up and get ready, and I'm going to let you hear some tunes. And hey, we're also going to use the looper on this thing. And after the show, after the clips I share with you here, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the patches that I set up here on the Podgo. So yeah guys, that was my first live gig playing with the new, well new to me, Line 6 Pod Go. So I'm going to share the patch, mainly the electric patch that I use. I just want to share the amp and effects and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm not going to get into how to create patches in this video, just want to let you know that up front. Uh, I will save that for another video once I properly learn how to use this thing because I'm really just scratching the surface. Here's the thing, I wasn't supposed to play, I wasn't scheduled to play a gig uh, the night of what you just saw here, uh, but I guess the person that was scheduled to play, uh, they couldn't make it or bailed or whatever, so bootleggers called me, I'm like, yeah, I'm there. So I'm like, well, I better dial in some tones for this so I can use it tonight. So I just quickly created a cool patch, which again, I'll share that with you. Uh, but first, you may be asking, Jason, dude, why did you choose the Line 6 Pod Go and not something like the Helix or Axe FX or Kemper or whatever? There's a few reasons. First of all, the price. I mean, this thing's like a third of the price of those other units. And honestly, to me, for what I need to use it for, which we'll get into, uh, the sounds and tones I'm getting, I mean, it's perfect for what I'm using it for, which is 
I have been playing these live gigs for well over a year now, but I've only been playing acoustic, right? Just playing acoustic and singing, do like a lot of 70s and 80s covers. I throw in an original or two here and there as well, but I wanted to come up with a way that I could play electric at these gigs as well. I'm like, man, that would just be a, a new and different dynamic than just playing acoustic and singing the entire time. So. One thing was I started playing with a looper a while back, just messing around with that, uh, playing acoustic. I would just strum a pattern like you heard earlier and then loop that and then play some leads behind it. And that's what kind of got the idea, you know, the wheels turning. I'm like, you know, I could do this with electric. If I could just like loop like a really nice clean tone and then play some gritty lead, overdriven lead over the top of that, that would be something that's really cool. Which brings me to my next point. I really wanted simplification for my live gigs. You gotta think that I'm already loading equipment, going to the place, setting everything up, performing, then tearing everything down, coming back home and unloading all that equipment. So the less I have, the easier and the better the whole process is going to be for me. So it just made sense to get an all-in-one unit that I could use for both acoustic and electric and that had a looper, which uh, I'll get to the looper. We'll talk about that at the very end here. So this seemed perfect for that. The tones, I, I like the tones for the type of music, the style of music that I'm doing here. I'm not playing metal. It's not like I'm playing... Uh, any of my normal metal stuff at these gigs. Although, maybe I do that to some backing tracks at some point. I don't know. We'll cross that bridge if and when we get there. Uh, but for these acoustic gigs and integrating some electric in, the Podgo just seems to work and I had a really good time playing through this thing last night. I'm really happy with it so far. So let me take you through this patch real quick. So you can see here, I've got the I've got the software up. This is the easiest way to edit, by the way. So I just chose a Fender amp. And again, I built this from scratch. I don't really like starting with any of the presets, uh, the default presets. They're just kind of eh, not that great. And to me, I like starting from scratch. So I built this patch from scratch. I did not mean to rhyme. So you can see I've got a clean Fender amp here, and that's what I wanted. I mean, what better clean tone is there than Fender, right? So I wanted a clean tone that I could kind of uh, like play the rhythms with. And then I've got some effects here as well. So behind the amp, or, or in the effects loop rather, I'm sorry, in the effects loop here, I have got some delay and some reverb. Now in front of the amp, you'll see that I've got an overdrive and I've also got the looper, which again was another reason why I picked up this unit. Uh, I'm probably gonna use a different looper though, and we'll get to that again, I'll tell you why in a second here. Uh, but I've got the looper, and what that allows me to do is just loop the clean tone like you heard, and when I record that, I just stomp the overdrive there and then I can play my lead over the clean tone. So that's pretty much it. That's a very, very simple setup. Oh, and the cab, I just stuck with the, the typical Fender cab, whatever cab came with it. And you can see the mic setup and all that good stuff. Uh, again, I just built this from scratch. I just, you know, here's the amp, here's the cab. I went through different mics to just see what sounds best to my ears. Uh, and then just put the effects that I wanted and to me it's just so much better to build these things from scratch as opposed to taking a preset and then you're basically gonna have to start over from scratch anyway when you start messing around with the presets. That's just my opinion though guys, it's just the way I like to do things because then I can, I can really dial in the tone I want building it from scratch versus trying to uh, church up something that's already there. Now for the acoustic patch, I actually ended up buying someone else's patch. And this is not something I would typically do or re really even recommend, but I just could not dial in a good acoustic tone uh, with anything in the pod go. Uh, so th they don't really have an acoustic amp. There is an acoustic pedal. Actually, I didn't even try that, but I just, you know, I needed something quick. I needed something quick and easy. And I was searching YouTube and I came across the channel, I think it's called Worship Tutorials. And uh, I'm like, you know what, this is a really nice acoustic sound. The patch was only $5.99, so I bought that. And I did some tweaking of that as well. And you can see it on the screen here. It's just pedals, there's no amp or anything like that. Uh, you've got kind of what's mimicking what, what would be a DI box for your acoustic. And there's some really cool reverb to that as well. Again, I just did a, a little bit of tweaking of the EQ there and that's that. So I was able to get a really nice acoustic tone and a really nice electric tone and just seamlessly go back and forth between the two. 
Uh, you guys know I use the Boss WL20 wireless setup, so all I gotta do is just change the wireless from one guitar to the other and done. And that's actually why I didn't get the wireless version. The wireless version of the Pod Go uh, was $100 more, and I'm like, well, I've already got a wireless, so why am I gonna spend more money when I already have something that works fine? You know, why not just use that? Now, the last thing I wanted to share about my first time experience with the Pod Go, first time playing with it live, is the Looper. And before I get into this, let me just say uh, as a disclaimer, the problem is not the Looper. The Looper works perfectly. It works just fine. The problem is right here, me. My problem with the Looper, and this is really set up like most Loopers are set up. So you click the Looper, you click, you stomp the little button there, right? It starts recording, then you click it again, it stops, and then you're playing that recording. Okay, so that's fine and dandy. Now, if you click it again, you can record another loop. I'm not really going down that path, not now anyway. I may at some point, I don't know. But what I'm doing right now primarily is I want to record the loop, play over it, and then I want to be able to stop the loop with one click. You can't really do that with this with this machine here okay so if you really want to stop the loop you have to click it twice then the loop will stop okay now if you want to not only stop the loop but like get rid of the loop like you don't want that loop coming up after that because if you click twice to stop it and then you click the button again well it's going to play what you recorded previously now that's okay in some circumstances actually that's that's not a bad thing at all but if you want to stop the loop completely and not have it play back again i think you have to click twice and then hold it down or, or maybe hold it down with one click I, i'm not really sure as you heard earlier <laughs> I screwed up a few times and it was just very frustrating. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to buy another looper uh, that has a dedicated stop. I know that the TC Electronics has a Ditto XL or Ditto something or other. I actually have their one Ditto looper, but it works the same way this thing works. And again, I, I need that dedicated stop. I need that one click, it stops done i don't have to worry about anything else so again i'm probably going to be getting well more than likely yes i'm going to be getting a different looper to use with the pod go uh, but i still like the pod go for the simplicity it really does simplify my setup i don't have to have an amp i don't have to have a bunch of effects pedals and i don't have to have this for acoustic and that for electric right if, if i were having like pedal setups i'd have to have two separate things right two separate like floorboards for it. I didn't really want to go that route. Again, I just wanted one unit that did everything well and one and done and that's it. It just simplifies my setup and it's less gear I have to worry about carrying to the stage. So again, I'm happy with it so far. The funny thing is when I first got it, when I first started going through the default patches, uh, I was like, Mm, I'm not digging this thing. But that's what happens when you go through the default patches most of the time. Most of the time the default setups, the default uh, pre-programmed patches on there, they're, they're just not desirable and that's just my opinion. I never have been able to find a tone that I like out of the box as soon as I plug in any of these types of units and I've played through several. Again, that's why I like to go in and just new patch, I start from scratch. That is it. That's all I do. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I am going to be doing some tutorials on the PodGo. Uh, I'm going to show you how to dial in tones once I learn this a little bit better because I want to know what I'm talking about when I'm showing you guys how to do things on here. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it at least. Uh, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed. Uh, I will be doing some metal tones on this as well. There's actually one particular amp that I had on my Line 6 HD 500 that I actually used for my very first album. That tone is here on the Pod Go, and maybe it's it's enhanced a little bit. Uh, I've got to really dig into it a little bit deeper, but I'll be sharing some more tutorials though on that, and also on live playing, if you guys want that. If you guys play live sometimes as well, and you would like to see more live tutorials, uh, please let me know, please comment below, because I'd love to give that content to you if it's something that you want, because I know I primarily cover metal guitar on here, but I kind of want to expand a little bit outside of that. Don't worry, I'm never going to get away from metal guitar. We're always going to, this is always going to be a metal guitar channel primarily, but I would like to expand 
kind of outside of that and I'd rather do it on this channel you know rather than having to create a new channel just for like you know acoustic live gigs or, or solo live gigs or whatever because I thought about doing that so uh, just drop me a comment and let me know let me know if you're okay with me extending this channel a little and giving you some some live gigging tips which may not be metal so guys once again thank you for all the support appreciate you guys until the next video well you know what to do keep it metal and uh, I know this really wasn't a metal video so just you know just just keep it cool how about that remember your ABCs always be cool see you next time guys